Alright, thanks for watching and today I want to talk about the two miracles of linear algebra and it's truly miraculous and it's really the culmination of all of hard work we've done in the previous months. So congratulations if you were watching from the beginning and if you weren't, well, you know, you still have all the videos to watch. Lucky you. Um, and so what are the two miracles? On the one hand, we studied abstract vector spaces, which seem overly abstract. And it is a video about 25 examples of those. And like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. On the other hand, you have Rn, which is nice and very concrete. It turns out those two are kind of the same. In other words, miracle number one, So any, so any finite dimensional vector space V is isomorphic to Rn or in general Fn for any field. So Fn for some n. Namely, n is the dimension of v. Okay, weird word. I said any vector space v is bleh to fn. So what does isomorphic mean? It means kind of the same. In other words, um, what this really means is there's a linear transformation from v to fn that is one to one and on to. Or in other words, there's an invertible linear transformation from V to Fn. In other words, there's a very easy way of getting back and forth from V to Fn, which is very nice. Uh, and um, I won't really prove it, but let me tell you what the isomorphism, uh, isomorphism is. is actually nothing new, something you've seen before. How can you attach a, a concrete coordinate? Oh, I already said it. How can, you, how can you attach a concrete list of numbers to an abstract vector? Well, just use coordinates. And I like to call it phi b for reasons that will be apparent in a second. So let beta be a basis for v of v and let phi b go from v to fn and simply phi b of v just gives you the coordinates of v with respect to beta. Let me illustrate this with an example. So consider this really abstract space p2 which is the space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2. And this abstract vector space is isomorphic to F3. Because of the following, for example, uh, if you let beta be the standard basis, then let's say phi b of this, that's a really abstract polynomial, 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared. Well, that's the coordinates of 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared with respect to beta. But how do you find coordinates? You evaluate the vector 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared in terms of your basis vectors. So it's 2 times 1 plus 3 times x plus 4 times x squared, and that gives you a 2, 3, 4. And you see, in that way, it's very easy to go back and forth from P2 to F3. Because you just have, if you have, for example, this really abstract vector 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared, you can attach the concrete vector 2, 3, 4 here. How cool is that? So in other words, it's very easy to go back and forth between the abstract vector spaces and concrete uh, Fn's 
and therefore for us, from now on, finite dimensional vector spaces. They're just like the same as Fn. Again, which is a miracle because I told you at the beginning, vector spaces are very abstract, suddenly they become super concrete. So this is cool and um, not true for infinite dimensional ones, except I think if you consider cardinality. So if you have a vector space with a countable basis, this is isomorphic to set of sequences, just like Hilbert spaces, for example. Uh, I think that's true, but uh, yeah, any two Hilbert spaces are isomorphic, so correct me if I'm wrong. All right, so that was the first thing I wanted to talk about, the first miracle, and that's because in linear algebra, we talked about vector spaces, now they're concrete. On the other hand, we talked about linear transformations. And here's a second miracle. Number two. So let V and W be finite dimensional vector spaces. Then it turns out the set of all linear transformations from V to W is just isomorphic to matrices. In other words, for us, linear transformations are like matrices. It's isomorphic to M, M by N. So the set of linear transformations from V to W is isomorphic to a set of matrices. What is M, what is N? N like input, N is a dimension of V, M like mouthput, dimension of W. And in particular, what this is saying, and this is very surprising, you think there are lots of linear transformations from V to W. Turns out there aren't that many. There are at most M times N linear transformations in terms of dimensions. So consequence. If you take the dimension of this set or this space, that's just Mn. So it's equal to the dimension of V times the dimension of W. Very wrong, by the way, for infinite dimensional vector spaces. There could be lots of linear transformations, and this is why PDEs are so hard, because there's so many of them and they're very hard to just study. Okay, what's more interesting in this case is the isomorphism. And again, if you want just a quick example, if you take, let's say, T from P2 to P1, T of P is just a differentiation thing, then uh, I'm, I've done a video on this, or I will do one, uh, then you can show that if you have the standard basis, 1x, x squared, and gamma to be 1x, then the matrix of T from beta to gamma turns out it will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. And with this association, it's very easy to go back and forth from the linear transformations from P2 to P1 to the set of uh, 2 by 3 matrices. Because, for example, here you have your T, and using the matrix, you can go back and forth. And this going back and forth, this isomorphism, is what's called capital Phi. So if little Phi was Phoebe, capital Phi is Regina Falange. So here's the isomorphism. So let beta be a basis of V. So V1 up to Vn. Basis of V. And gamma be a basis of W. W1 up to Wm. Basis of W. Then you can just define phi going from your linear transformations to matrices simply by phi of t. Again, we fix the basis, so it's just the matrix of t from beta to gamma. 
Okay, and also by the way, uh, there's a video precisely on differentiation where I explain those terms in a little bit more detail and how they relate to each other. But that's not the point of today. The point is today I want to show that this phi is in fact an isomorphism. And the proof is really cool, that's why I want to do it. So, so put um, claim phi is an isomorphism. Again, L, V, W to M, M by N. Phi of T equals to this matrix is an isomorphism. And proof. How do you show it something is an isomorphism? Uh, you show it's linear, you show it's one-to-one, uh, -one, and then you show it's onto. So let's check phi is linear. What this means is simply if you take phi u plus ct, well, that's the matrix of u plus ct from beta to gamma, and by linearity of this matrix transformation, that's u beta gamma plus c t beta gamma. So technically I'm cheating, but you can show independently that this is true, and that's phi of u plus c phi of t. So that's okay. Again, that, that part is, I don't want to focus on that one because it turns out uh, one to one and on to, I guess on to it's harder. So let me also do one to one. Well, suppose, suppose phi of t is zero, in this case zero is the zero matrix. So big O, well by definition phi of t is the matrix of t from beta to gamma. On the other hand, zero matrix, it's the matrix of a certain linear transformation, which is the zero transformation. And if two matrices are the same, the linear transformations have to be the same. So T is T naught, which is precisely the zero transformation. That's a definition of one to one. If phi of T is zero, then T is zero, except you need to interpret what zero means. Okay, it's on to, that's, harder okay and yes it's on on to um, so how do you show this right write that down or press pause if you trying to follow me mm. what this means is if I give you any matrix it's the matrix of some linear transformation so let a be given some given matrix and find T from B to W with phi of T equals A. That is T goes from beta to gamma equals A. And the idea is simply let T be the transformation whose matrix is A. So suppose we find a matrix of T, we wanna find A. So here's the idea. We would like the matrix of T to be A, which is again, this huge thing with entries A, I, J. But now what's the definition of a matrix? It means if you evaluate T at the Jth basis vector and you write this, in terms of your outputs, then the ith entry should be precisely aij. So the idea is define t from v to w by t of vj equals to the sum from 1 to m, so uh, 1 to uh, mouthput, so 1 to m, 
of aij and a wi. And the reason we're summing over i is because here we have a j, here we have a j, so we don't sum over j, because that would make j disappear. We want to sum over i. And the point is, those are given constants. So this formula at least makes sense. Why does that define all of t? You see, technically we need t for any vector in v, but it turns out because vj's are a basis, then we are actually done. This is again for all j. And then t exists because v1 up to vn is a basis for v. And that's what's called the linear transformation extension theorem. LT extension theorem. And I have a video on this if you're curious what this looks like. And the nice thing is, then we're done. Because look, what is then the matrix of T? It's precisely A. So then, T from beta to gamma equals A by construction. So, but this is just phi t, so phi t equals to a. And that's precisely what we wanted to do. Given a certain matrix, we constructed a linear transformation whose matrix is a. And finally, you may ask, well, I have in some maybe in my lectures, I talked about la, which is left multiplication by a. Why can't we just let t to be la? This doesn't work because LA only works from FN to FM. So LA, if, if you, in case you don't know, it's a linear transformation from FN to FM, where LAX, it's simply AX. And one of the nice things is the matrix of LA with respect to the standard basis is precisely A. But that would work, but just in that case. In general, you would have to do an analog, which is just a linear transformation whose matrix is A. All right, I hope you like this little excursion into uh, the miracles of linear algebra. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.